my name is Jess and welcome to my channel have a look at this today I'm going to be doing a video that I'm super excited about and that is my favorite childhood books so the other day I was in a Waterstones and I was just sort of perusing around the shelves and my eyes fell on a copy of the hungry caterpillar the hungry caterpillar you have no idea how much I loved that book when I was a child and it just inspired me to talk to all of you about other books that kind of influenced and shaped my love of shaped <laughs> my love of reading throughout the years so I split this um, video into two main sections so the books that I read between the ages of six and ten and the books that I read between the ages of ten and thirteen so just all kind of pre-YA. So basically I'm hoping to talk to you about the books I read in kind of a chronological order of how I read them roughly. So the first books that I remember obsessively buying and reading were the Rainbow Magic books. I don't know if you guys remember these but there were loads of them. I think I read online that there were like over 200 different ma Rainbow Magic books. The essential premise of the Rainbow Magic books is that there's two girls called Kirsty and Rachel and they have all these adventures with the fairies from the fairyland but each fairy kind of like represents a different thing. So the first ones were there was a fairy for each colour of the rainbow so there was like Ruby the Red Fairy and then there just started to be all different ones so like the birthday fairy. My favourite one was Honey the Sweetie Fairy because I got to read about fairies and food. Those are two passions of mine from a young age. <laughs> yeah I loved these books and I think that what they kind of instilled in me was a love for series, a love for the fantastical and the strange and also just a love for reading myself because those books were the sort of, they were the first ones that I really remember remember picking up and choosing and reading just solely for my own pleasure. Next we have the BFG. I don't think I read a massive amount of Roald Dahl mainly because the illustrations kind of freaked me out a little bit as a child but one that I really remember loving was the BFG and I think that's because we read it in school when I was like seven or eight. I just remember being so fascinated by the story because whenever you wrote stories in school you weren't really supposed to make up your own words that was just that was generally a thing that you were advised against doing from like a young age like you know you were told if you said a word wrong or if a word didn't exist but what was just so mind-boggling to me about Roald Dole's works was that he just he didn't care about any of that like he made up his own words he made up his own lands and it was just so fascinating to me so with like the Rainbow Fairy Magic books I hadn't kind of realized so much that there was an author behind those books but reading Roald Dole's books was the first time I remember being aware that there was an author that had crafted this story and that had crafted this world and that had like made it so amazing. Next we have a book series that I remember absolutely devouring when I was like eight or nine and it was the local library summer reading challenge and those were the Molly Moon books this young orphan girl called Molly Moon and she learns to hypnotize people and essentially she just uses her new found powers to get everything that she wants. <laughs> I remember really loving this series because like Molly was one of the first young girls I'd read about in children's literature who I could kind of see myself in. Like she wasn't always well behaved, she could be quite mischievous and she was just so wonderful to read about because I felt like I was in her head. I felt like I was reading a child's voice that actually felt similar to an actual child's voice rather than just an adult reader telling you this is what a child sounds like. It did actually leave me believing that I could also hypnotise people and I do remember actually trying to hypnotise my mum. Oh god I think I actually did try and hypnotise my mum. It didn't work so you know that is the one complaint I have about that series. It gave me several false expectations. I did not develop superpowers after reading it. So and then comes the holy grail of my childhood reading library and that is of course Harry Potter. I first encountered Harry Potter when I was eight years old. A friend of mine in a class recommended that I read it because she'd absolutely loved it and this was a friend of mine that never read, like she hated reading. So of course this meant that it had to be good. So I got the first book out of the library and I don't remember reading the first book at all. But I remember closing the book and just having my mind blown. I don't think I can describe really what Harry Potter did for my childhood. Like I read anyway, I was quite an average reader as a child, but I honestly don't know if I would be as much of a reader as I am today if it weren't for Harry Potter. I just feel like a lot of the moral lessons and a lot of the characters that I've read about have really stuck with me and will continue to stick with me. And 
I think part of that is because I read it at such a young age and that I grew up with it and I grew up watching the movies. Harry Potter's been part of my life for about half my life and it's quite, it's quite insane. And then it was my 10th birthday and I decided that as I was now a 10 year old I should start reading more mature books. Which meant despite the fact that I was 10 I was still gonna go and take the books off that 11 plus shelf in the library. The first series I remember reading after Harry Potter was the series of unfortunate events and that's by Lemony Snicket and I think what really influenced me with these novels was the writing style. I, it was such an unusual writing style and I'd never encountered anything like it. Lemony Snicket is just really meta. It's like an omniscient narrator who let you know from the outset that they were going to be omniscient but they weren't omniscient because they were a character in the You'd have to read it. It's really, really strange, but I had never read a book like Lemony Snicket's books up to that point, and I still have never read anything like them since. And I am so excited that they're making a TV show adaptation of that series coming to Netflix, because it's just going to make all of my childhood dreams come true. I loved that series. There was one where they went to a boarding school, and obviously because Harry Potter had started another obsession in me with boarding schools, that was my favourite one in the series. The next book I remember reading is Little Women, and Little Women was the first experience that I had ever reading a classic, I think. Even now, Little Women is like a massive comfort read for me. It pretty much was and is one of my favourite heroines of all time. And even though I will admit the Little Woman got a tad preach at times, I still really like that side of it. I feel like it was just really, really comforting and still is comforting whenever I reread it. The next book I remember reading when I was about 10 or 11 is Ink Heart by Cornelia Funk. Funky. Funk. I really hope it's funky. How cool would that be if that was her surname? Ink Heart is quite a famous middle grade book. It was made into a film with Helen Mirren. I don't know if you remember that. It's about a girl and whenever her dad reads aloud, like the characters come out of the pages and there was this one book called Ink Cart where a load of characters have come out of the pages and it's just chaos and she needs to go and try and get the characters back into the pages. It was just really magical and it put into words for the first time what reading was to me. It just, it understood exactly how I felt about characters and about fictional worlds and it was such a magical reading experience. Next we have The Princess Diaries. So I picked up this first one in the series when I was about 11 years old, not really knowing what it was about, just kind of liking the shiny cover. With the exception of Hermione Granger, I had never read a female character that I really, really, on like a spiritual level, identified with until Mia. But in a way, Mia was even more accessible than Hermione because her real life life was much more similar to mine, even though she's a princess and I wasn't a princess. Megabot just writes in such a convincing voice, especially for a 14 year old girl, which is how old Mia is when she starts this story. And this, this just had some very valuable life lessons in it about friendship and about growing up. And it was also absolutely hilarious. Mia is such a neurotic and funny heroine. The first few really got me through those kind of awkward tween years and I will forever be grateful to Meg Cabot for that. Oh, there you have it. Those are the books that really kind of influenced me all the way from ages like six to all the way to the ages 13. And I would also like to know if there were any books that you remember loving when you were younger. If so, leave a comment below and until next time, goodbye.